Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Round 6. But this edition of Round 6 is a little bit different. We got a three-man corner. It's only three of us. So I'm your host, Colvin Underwood, and I'm joined by the Fight Fans Fight Fan, Left Jab Lamont. I'm also joined by former amateur boxer, insider in Washington, D.C. boxing scene, the doctor, Don Hollingsworth Jr. The longest reigning champion in boxing, and that is Gary, Mr. Russell. He took on Mark Maxeo. Maxeo won the fight. No he question. Did, he did enough to win the fight. No it question dominant, again. It wasn't a dominant performance because Gary Russell really fought with one hand. And in saying that, he almost won the fight with one hand. So I'll ask you, Left Jab Lamont, just give me your overall impressions of the fight. Cannot take anything away from uh, from the young Filipino kid, Mark Maxayo. He did he did what he was supposed to do, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, you have to wonder if, you know, all things being equal, uh, that fight goes that way towards the, towards the young guy. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, if uh, Gary Russell was healthy, I don't. Uh, I don't see him. I don't see him uh, losing to that uh, to the young upstart. I, I just don't. I just feel like what he. If I got a guy that put a hurt hand in front of me or hurt shoulder, not once did you see Maxell faint and shoot it at his collarbone. You didn't say, oh, I'm gonna break this guy down, and I don't think he did enough to do that. You have a Do you have a problem with how the fight was yes. scored? Yes, I do. Do you agree with Gary okay. that he it's gave him a boxing lesson and he should have won? Yes, he did get more boxing lesson, but we ain't gonna fake like Sweet G didn't get hit with some stuff that made him go whoa. Cause we saw him hit Gary a couple times. Gary had to rock back and there's like get it together. Let's keep it all the way tall. They've been wanting to get this boy away from this belt. We discussed this the last episode. We broke all of this down. So if you sitting there, you got this guy in front of you, politics, you know, be what it is. All right. We ain't got no more reason. Now, he now, he not whatever, if this fight's close, you, he gonna be short tonight. And, and did y'all get the feeling, because I watched the fight live, I got the feeling that the Showtime announcers were really pulling for Maxeo. No question saw, about it. They, they saw the whole Filipino young Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, as soon as, Maxeo, as soon as Maxeo yes. got the decision, what they do? They popped up the tweet from Manny saying, hey, yes. congratulations. Yada, yes. yada, yada. So Absolutely. To your point, to your point, Don, I think the powers that be were kind of happy that Maxeo won the fight because Maxeo is what? He's an action fighter. Right. He's an action fighter. But I would say and he's going to fight more than once a year. Where does this leave Gary Russell Jr.? He's going to have to go to 30 35. And he's been calling guys out of 30 35. So who's to say they might say, oh, whoever at 130, yeah, he's the guy that you got to fight. And it's a, remember back in Philly in the 80s, the, the middleweight murders row type of thing? They're going to give it to him like that. Like, ain't not one touch up type of fight he's going to get. So you're, he telling, take it. so you're telling me that he is going to be kind of at the will of how promoters do how the game is played and how it goes. So you you lose Dad the title. Right, I'm saying it that way. Gary Antoine Russell steps into the ring where he is trying to make that step in boxing. And it's a big step, guys. You're going from prospect to contender. So he steps up in competition and he fights Vista Postal. And we know that Postal has fought everybody. I'm gonna give it to you and you tell me what you think about Gary Russell taking on Victor Postal. You know what they say about former world champions, great fighters, they always got one more great fight left in them. So who is to say, there's always a chance, but who is to say, Tweezy throws all these bricks. Forget about his Olympic pedigree. It just goes in there and starts, man, I'm walking this boy now because I'm stronger than him. And I, and I want to make him feel all of the wear and tear. And I walked through, next thing you know, Victor Post was working his stick, catching his stuff and surviving. Next, now it was after the fifth round and then it's a whole new fight. You never know. So that, that can happen. But I still believe that Tweezy will adjust, 
use all of that sparring, all of them amateur fights, all of that international fights and Olympic pedigree to then adjust, stop giving. Poposa has problem with speed and vision, changing the levels, and then he moves forward. Mm. Uh, Antoine Russell is, uh, is is not someone who who's short on uh, confidence. He, if I'm not mistaken, he's predicted that he's gonna say he's gonna take care of uh, Postel in five rounds. Okay, so so I I uh, I don't see that part of it happening. But at the same time, you have to consider that that Antoine Russell is undefeated and has knocked out everybody that he's faced. So. So I'm, I, and that kind of excitement has got me intrigued and, and pulling for him that way. But, uh, but when youth meets experience, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's not a good, uh, it's not a good outcome or result for the, uh, for the youth side of that equation. If, you, if it's not ready, if, and everything's, everything's not, uh, not in place for him to, to, for him to succeed, so we'll we'll see how that goes. I think this is a progression fight, y'all. It we'll is how it definitely far is. Yeah, he has progressed as a professional fighter, and he gets post all out in five. I'm impressed. Josh Taylor comes back to the ring. You know, we got to talk about Josh Taylor. He's a unified champion in one of the hottest divisions out there. One forty, everybody's sniffing around one forty, and. So we get to see Josh Taylor back in the ring to defend the titles. What are we expecting from Josh Taylor? I expect a, a performance that will be uh, a little bit more of a, a tactical match uh, where he actually uh, exposes uh, exposes uh, the weakness of uh, Jack Catterall inside. Because Jack Catterall is a, is, a, uh, is a southpaw just like Josh Taylor, okay, and he's quick. He's got, but he he lacks he lacks uh, the size. Josh Taylor has every tool in the tool bag that he could possibly have to break you down, okay, and that's what I expect to happen over time. I think um, um, I think Catterall is, uh, uh, is experienced enough to be able to survive twelve. But I don't think he's got the tools in his uh, in his arsenal to be able to pull out a win. I expect for Josh Taylor to be Josh Taylor. I, he wasn't even supposed to make it this far. He was. Remember what happened with him with Reach's progress. Matter of fact, forget about Reach's progress. Let's go to a fight that let's see. I bet you y'all don't even know the O'Hara Davies fight. O'Hara Davies, go look up that rivalry. That was a domestic dispute that was over there if you was a hardcore fan you knew about that building because O'Hara Davies well he talked a lot of stuff he was trying to get Floyd to you know sign him a whole bunch of stuff and that's what catapulted him because O'Hara everything that he has now O'Hara Davies was supposed to have and he skunked O'Hara Davies made him quit to do what oh, he did to Ramirez what he did to Ramirez and they didn't have him they never been before. done like that before. He was yeah, dismantled. He dismantled. Uh, uh, Josh Taylor dismantled, dismantled him. Ramirez. Absolutely. Yeah. Dominated him. Mm -hmm. And so Josh Taylor, to your point, uh, he put people on notice that he was that dude. And he had smoke. He got smoke for everybody. He already said he wants to fight Tank. He already said he wants mm -hmm. to fight all the top guys. He's there. And he's ready to go. So um, to see him back in the ring is a good thing. And I can't wait to see the fight. I think it's going to be an action fight. But I think in the end that Taylor is going to be too much. That's going to do it for round six. So glad that you were able to join us. And we were able to talk about some, some boxing like we like to do. Again, you know the show comes on dnbsports1.com. You can always check YouTube. Check your social media. We'll let you know when round six is going to air. And if you like it and you want to subscribe to DMV Sports One, feel free to do that. Also, follow my man Juan Marshall at Pro Am Fight Talk. Follow our esteemed uh, panelist, Gary Digital Williams, and his boxing along the Beltway Blog, one of the Bibles of boxing in Indeed. this town. So, we will definitely catch you uh, next month for another thrilling edition of round six.